Hello everybody, we're back again. Explore the Bible lesson for July 26th. Yeah, we've almost made it through another month and we're glad to be with you tonight. We're going to be looking at Proverbs 15, 33 through 16, 11. Not exactly in that order, but we're going to, should be covering all those verses. We're, we're uh, looking forward to sharing with you tonight. Let's just jump right to our Facebook question. What are some strong motivators in your life? Christy Adder said, kids. And Alice Bonchev said, family. Cutie Caps, knowing one day I will stand before the Lord to give an account on how I use the talents and blessings he gave me. Wow. Okay, then John Dykes, our son. Now, Beth has responded before. I think this is John's first response. Thank you for uh, <laughs> phoning in or whatever you did. Uh, he said, setting goals to give me something to achieve. Annie Smith said, dust on the furniture. Yep. Yeah, that, that is very motivating. Okay, uh, Judy Rogers said, knowing company is coming. That's yeah. motivating too, yeah. yeah. Cleanest, fastest house cleanup ever. Sylvia Wheeler said, deadlines, because I usually procrastinate. Yeah, and uh, Sherry Martin repeats that. She says deadlines, but she also said she liked Judy Capp's answer, that long one about accounting mm -hmm. for everything. Yeah. Okay, so now... What we're going to do this week, we're going to kind of be seeing this same picture over and over. You know, in the first nine chapters of Proverbs, we were kind of looking at these things. And you see in the middle of the box, I hope you can see that, it says, Fear the Lord, trust the Lord, hold on to instruction, stay on the path. Now, this week, uh, just like last week, we're going to kind of be dividing the Scripture uh, up into different portions instead of looking at it linear. And uh, you'll kind of see the connection as we go along. So what we're going to start with is we're going to begin with Proverbs 15:33. It's the very last verse in chapter 15 and Proverbs 16:8, which is not the last verse in our passage. But we're going to put these two together. So Proverbs 15:33 says, "The fear of the Lord is what wisdom teaches, and humility comes before honor." And number, uh, verse 8 says, "Better a little with righteousness than great income with injustice." This teaches us about wisdom demonstrated. And if you notice, it's on the screen now. And according to this verse, if we're, we know we're receiving true wisdom if it causes us to fear the Lord. Mm -hmm. When we say we fear the Lord, we don't imply that his presence terrorizes us. You know, I fear snakes. Mm -hmm. Snakes will make me run. But it's not the same type of fear. Um, it's quite the opposite. Having God in our lives gives us a sublime sense of joyful trust that emanates from his faithful love for us and our response of loving respect for him. Fearing the Lord comes to, involves coming to him in humility when we recognize he has the power and authority to do anything he wants, and we are powerless and That's helpless. Right. Our helplessness causes us to bow before him as humble servants. Left to ourselves, we may cultivate the notion that his provision looks like lots of money and possessions. Mm -hmm. But when we're wise in him, however, we consider being right with him and living according to his ways a priceless treasure in itself. Now, before she moves on to the next thing, we're going to do some quotes like we did last week. And we're going to look at some motivators uh, because we're going to be talking about motives later on. But a lot of discussion of uh professional, motivational speakers, uh, and also some quotes that we think are maybe not quite so correct. So yeah. we'll let Lana start with the quotes. Of course, you recognize this person. This is Oprah, and she said, Be thankful for what you have. You'll end up having more. If you concentrate on what you don't have, you will never, ever have enough. Huh? Yeah. Okay. So if I'm thankful, I'll get more. Right. In her view. And then here's another one. Believe in yourself and you will be unstoppable. If you notice, both of these quotes have to deal with you. Well, I think you're gonna, we're going to see that in a lot of, of yeah. your quotes tonight. Now, I'm looking at the top four motivational uh, speakers today according to a certain website. And this is the first one. No, this isn't the first one on our list. This is Pinocchio from that Geico commercial. Remember when he pointed, you have potential. And his nose started growing, and he says, you have. And his, his nose is so long, he says, never mind. Yeah. Okay, but we're going to move on. Uh, Dave Ramsey, who m many of you know because you may have taken his Financial Peace University course, 
But Dave Ramsey, according to this website, was the number one motivational speaker. He's an American financial author, radio host, television personality, and motivational speaker. His show and writing strongly encourage people to get out of debt. And we're, we're familiar with that because we have offered Financial Peace University several times at our church. And here's a quote that he gave about God and, and Jesus. So just listen to what he said. Then I started understanding the mystical and the beautiful part of a spiritual walk and understanding the need for a Savior. That's when I accepted Christ. Could I ever consider the possibility that there is no God? I guess we all do. People who say they have pure faith really are not honest because there are times that anybody wonders. Okay, now we're going to move down to the next section of Scripture, and this time we're going to be looking at the first verse in chapter 16, then of verses 4 and 5, and then verse 9. So verse 1 says, The reflections of the heart belong to mankind, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Then verses 4 and 5, The Lord has prepared everything for His purpose, even the wicked for the day of disaster. Everyone with a proud heart is detestable to the Lord. And finally, verse 9 says, A person's heart plans his way, but the Lord determines his steps. So our second thing, not only do we have wisdom demonstrated, we have accountability established. The Lord gives us his direction in keeping with his purpose. Accordingly, we do well to acknowledge him in whatever we ask, whatever, we un whatever task we undertake. He's prepared everything in our world so his purpose can be accomplished. Therefore, we're foolish when we ignore him and his purpose. We're foolish when we don't take his purpose in consideration. Our foolishness drives us to develop plans for ourselves that center on our purposes instead of his. By contrast, we're wise when we turn to him for guidance regarding his plan for us. That's when we're ready to seek his direction and work according to it. You know, when we place our trust in the Lord, our hearts turn to His plan for us and our eagerness to live it out. That's when we ask Him to take us where He wants us to go and follow Him as He determines our steps along the way. Yeah, how many times have you planned your day and then That's it right. totally changed? That's right. Because the Lord was doing the directing, not you. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's another quote. Keep going. Everything you need will come to you at the perfect time. Really? Sounds logical. Mm, yeah. And then, you are only confined by the walls you build yourself. Notice once again, it's all about you. Yeah. It's what you decide, what you want to do, and it's up, you know, if you build these walls, that's what's going to contain yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the number two guy on the list, Tony Robbins. We've all heard of him because Tony has, uh, not only is he a motivational speaker, personal finance instructor and self-help author. He became known for his infomercials. I remember years ago they were on all the time. He's yeah. written self-help books, uh, Unlimited Power, Unleash the Power Within, and Awaken the Giant Within. You know, one of the things he promotes in his seminars, which I think are two or three thousand uh, dollars for attending those, is to walk barefoot on a bed of hot coals. And that's part of unleashing the power within you. It would unleash yeah, something if I did that. Foot. Okay, and here's a quote. Each of them were having a quote about how they feel about God or about Jesus. And this is his quote. Whatever you want to call that, God or the universe or infinite intelligence or the divine mind or energy, I truly believe God is a loving energy. And I believe that it only responds to absolute faith. Another word for absolute certainty. Sounds like he's got it all figured out, doesn't it? Uh, sounds like it. Now we're going to look at Proverbs 16, verse 2, and verses 10 and 11. Verse 2 says, All a person's ways seem right to him, but the Lord weighs motives. God's verdict is on the lips of a king, and his mouth should not give an unfair judgment. Verse 11, Honest balance and scales are the Lord's. All the weights are in the bag. In the bag are his concern. And we're going to see on our heart, we're going to put another uh, point. Motives matter. You know, when we look at our actions and we say to ourselves that, you know, we're pleasing the Lord, God knows that if, he's, if we're pleasing him or not. You know, we may think we are, but we're probably not. 
In Solomon's day, by remaining loyal to God, a king would be able to make right decisions. That was what Solomon was known for, was his wisdom. Mm -hmm. That's right. If a king sought God's wisdom and took it to heart, he would be kept from making an unfair judgment. In light of that reality, the key to his success as king rested in his relationship to the Lord. Doesn't sound like our world today, does it? If he turned his heart toward listening to the Lord, the motive for his decisions and judgments would please God. So before customers used coins, and that's kind of getting to be an interesting subject now, yeah. they weighed pieces of silver or gold to make their purchases. You know that's why we have ridges on our yes. coins, silver yes. coins, is because people would peel off at the mm-hmm. edge of the silver yeah. coin. But anyway, merchants who sold items to them would use balances and scales to weigh the gold and silver. Dishonest merchants would manipulate the balances and scales so they could collect a little bit more from the customer. You know, kind of put your thumb on the scale. That's what the butcher would do, oh, yeah. that's right. A merchant's honesty said something noteworthy about his motive. Okay, we got a couple more quotes, I yeah. think. Each morning we are born again. What we do today is what matters most. And that's by Buddha. Buddha. Yeah. Yes. And then another quote is, all we have is now. I don't even know what that means. I, I mean, I know we have to live in the moment. Okay, now another outstanding motivational speaker. This is the next guy on our list. <laughs> no, wait a minute. That's Matt Foley. You may have seen him. That was uh, Chris Farley uh, on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. He played this motivational speaker. Of course, he was used to say, they said he's used to dealing with big crowds, but he's always just had a few people he was talking to on his skits. And... Uh, uh, his his big quote was, I am 35 years old, divorced, and I live in a van by the river. Okay, but the next guy, this guy is really interesting. I don't know if you've heard of Nick Vujicic, but uh, Nick is an Australian Christian evangelist and top motivational speaker. He's number three on our list. He, he also was born with a, a condition called Focamelia, and it's a rare disorder characterized by the absence of legs and arms. Yeah, you see him there. There's no arms. If you saw the rest of him, there weren't any legs either. He does have one foot. It's really kind of unusual, but he help, it does help him stand up. Uh, he has very strong testimony on surviving and thriving despite his disabilities. And listen to this quote. This is going to be kind of long. I wanted you to hear it because he's very strong, I think, very spiritually. Strong. Having faith beliefs and convictions is a great thing but your life is measured by the actions you take based upon them you can build a great life around those things you believe and have faith in i've built mine around my belief that i can inspire and bring hope to people facing challenges in their lives that belief is rooted in my faith in god i have faith that he put me on this earth to love inspire and encourage others and especially to help all who are willing to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. It's good to know that a lot of people are listening to him. Okay, so next uh, is our last bit of scripture passage, and this is verse 3 and then verses 6 and 7. Verse 3 says, Commit your activities to the Lord, and your plans will be established. And then verses 6 and 7 say, Iniquity is atoned for by loyalty and and faithfulness and one turns from evil by the fear of the Lord when a person's ways please the Lord he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him okay and this uh, this is kind of our last last section and it says blessings assured when we acknowledge God is in full control of our lives we make sure that what happens will honor him and give us a sense of stability the key to being content in him involves determining what we will devote ourselves to pleasing Him, or that we will devote ourselves to pleasing Him. Solomon identified another blessing people receive from Him when they live for Him. Their sinful behavior is atoned for in a sense that their sins are covered in part. Remember, this is before Jesus, uh, never to be brought up again. Solomon referred to sins against the Lord, at, against the Lord's standard of righteousness as iniquity. Because of God's loyalty and faithfulness to his people, he can be counted on to cleanse us from our sin. Now, when believers, it it also tells when believers choose the path that the Lord favors, we can depend on another blessing. And that's that 
it comes in our relationship with our enemies. Bible teachers have described the exact nature of this in two different ways. Some understand this blessing to flow out of the way we live around people who dislike us because of our walk with the Lord. As they look at us, they will come to respect our integrity, even though they may detest our faith in Him. In that way, we make our enemies live at peace with us. Other Bible scholars think the blessing of peace with our enemies comes directly from the Lord. He will cause our enemies to live in peace with us. Of course, both perspectives may be correct. Yeah. Another quote, good things will come. Oh, that's right. We do have one more section. I thought we yeah. were done. But yeah. I remember these make so, so much sense. Good things will come. Isn't that a great motivational yes. quote? And you can do it. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of an Adam Sandler movie there a little bit. Okay, yeah. now this last guy, I'm glad he's number four. I wish he was much lower. Not going to say any other, anything else bad about him. I'm just going to tell you what, what it says about him and what he says. Eckhart Tolle is a German-born resident of Canada, best known as the author of The Power of Now and A New Earth, Awakening to Your Life's Purpose. In 2011, he was listed, now listen to this, by Watkins Review as the most spiritually influential person in the world. Okay. That's what it says, and this is his quote about God. Through the present moment, you have access to the power of life itself, that which has traditionally been called God. So the power of life itself is what's traditionally called God. As soon as you turn away from it, God ceases to be a reality in your life, and all you are left with is a mental concept of God, which people, which some people believe and others deny. He's, he's the, the leading spiritual influence in our world today. Yeah. Okay, so now we've looked at a lot of different things, but what I want to, to tell you is that kind of the thing I got out of this is our motivation should be to be a God pleaser. You know, it, it talks continually about doing things that please God, finding what God wants us to do, and doing following, those things. And following what He wants us yeah, to do, and, and, and not and making our We can plans. make our plans, but we know that He's going to determine our steps, yeah. which really affects yeah. our plans as well. Okay, so now uh, it made me think of a song, you know, long time ago in the 80s, back when we were living in Selma. Uh, there was a group a Christian rock group, they were called. And they their music was good, but it, it it didn't really compare to the secular rock music. And now the Christian music today, I say, is is technology-wise as good as any music out there. Back then, not so much. But Petra's song, listen to the words to this song they call it, and the name of this song was God Pleaser. So many voices telling me which way to go. So many choices come from those who think they know. There's a way that seems right to a man, but it only brings him death. I want to go the way that leads to life till I die, draw my dying breath. And then the chorus, don't want to be a man pleaser. I want to be a God pleaser. I want to have the wisdom to discern the two apart. Don't want to be a man pleaser. I want to be a God pleaser. I just want to do the things that please the Father's heart. That's pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good uh, theology there. And uh, even if it's coming from a guy uh, singing what was considered uh, rock, 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 rock music, music back then, and a lot of people wouldn't play that kind of music in their church. In fact, we didn't play it in our church, but we would listen to it uh, maybe when we weren't at church. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to have a special slide this week on uh, your weekly challenge or whatever we're going to do, because this is it. I want you to do things this week that are going to please God. Now, every day... I want you to consider the things that you're doing, and a lot of you are just staying home. And it may be there are things you can do at home that can please God. Maybe calling somebody on the phone that you're thinking about that may may just need to hear from you. You know, think about that. You may, you may want to write a card to somebody or send an email to somebody. You know that would please God because sharing His love with others is something that we can all do. Okay, uh, so it's been fun coming to you. I was gonna let us wear our mask this week but because you know it's been mandated but we are at home right now when I, when we come to church tomorrow we'll have our mask on and i think tomorrow we're going to wear those that nancy ogden gave us that 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 have the kind of the animals on the front that'll be good but as we close tonight 
Let's close with a word of prayer. And I'm glad that you've been watching us tonight or today or whenever it is. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you uh, for the lesson today. Father, we thank you for what you've taught us. And I pray that we'd be faithful in seeking to do things that are going to please you, Father. That that should be our desire as Christians. If everything we do pleases you, Father, then we know we'll be doing the right things. We thank you so much for giving us your word to teach us this thing, these things. We thank you for Proverbs and the messages that has been giving us. Father, I pray for each person that's watching this. Pray that you be with them during these difficult times and continue to, to bless them, Father. We pray for those in our group who are not feeling as well. Father, give them strength and be with them. And Lord, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye.